Good morning. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come into his presence with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Lord, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for the freedom to worship you, Lord. We ask that you would give us the ability to worship you in spirit and in truth right now, Lord, because that's the important thing. Lord, even if we weren't free to worship you, Lord, we could still, if we weren't free to worship you in this country, we could still worship you in spirit and in truth. So we thank you for that, Lord. Help us to practice it now while we're free to be able to do that so that we can example to others the blessings of worshiping God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So let's stand and do that. Strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do Comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Let's put our hands together and praise the Lord together. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not think you won't grow. Good morning, welcome to Hawthorne Assembly. It's the middle of summer, amen? And a beautiful day outside. And we just turned the fans on and we didn't even turn the air on today. You know, we have air conditioning here at Hawthorne Assembly now. We, are, we have first world good things and uh, we thank Jesus for this beautiful facility. We thank the Lord for the people who are here. We thank the Lord for our technology. And as you can see, we have a number of people who are gone today, vacation, COVID, whatever. Uh, but hey, we're glad that you're here. We're glad that the Facebook Live streaming audience is watching. Let's open in a word of prayer. Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this last Sunday in July. We thank you for what's been happening just 15 minutes away at Assembly Park Camp, God. 
We're thankful for the young people whose lives have been transformed and changed, the water baptisms, those filled with the Holy Spirit, God. Just thank you for what's happening there. Thank you for this next week ahead, too. Another week of great things happening in the lives of young people. And we pray right now from the onset for a number of our family members who are away from the church today because of COVID. And God, we're just grateful today that COVID is just another thing on the list of diseases. It doesn't take priority, but God, because of it, we are just lifting up these people, believing for their quick healing, quick recovery, God. And we just thank you that we, we just think of them, each and every one of them. We think of people like Lois and Brandy and so many more. And we thank you for those who have recovered, like Sandra and, and Rose and others, God, who have now recovered from this. And thank you, Jesus, that others, too, that need a touch in their body. For those who are at work today and have to work, God, we pray your blessing upon them. And uh, we're just grateful for this service now. We thank you, Lord, that we receive everything you have for us through the worship, through the communion, through the word, through our fellowship now. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said amen. 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 Let's continue amen. to worship the Lord this morning. Amen. amen. Okay. Full of scripture this morning. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Amen. amen. So here we go. the hands. There you go. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my pain, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Say yes again. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. To all your promises. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. His promises are true and faithful, amen. Say the words of Paul, I'm pressed, not crushed. I'm pressed, but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. And his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for a night, his joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. He's told us we can do this, yes. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. 
We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, one more time, amen to his promises. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I receive it. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, that he might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Redeemer, Redeemer, Savior, friend of man, once ruined by the fall, thou hast devised salvation's plan, for thou hast died for all. So blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace. Of all his kingdoms conqueror, whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. We bless your name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless your name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. Messiah, Lord of all 
became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so worship, but we make the Lord's table part of our worship singing and our worship service. You may be seated for a second. Stay in an attitude of expectation and anticipation, and Lord, we do pray right now as we uh, transition to your, this Holy Communion, the Lord's table. We're thankful, God, that we can gather here and we can celebrate as the word tells us to in Jesus' name. For those who are watching on uh, live stream, you might want to right now go get yourself some kind of juice and a cracker or a piece of bread or whatever, and you can take communion with us. I'm going to ask the four gentlemen I asked to help serve communion to come to the front of the church at this time. We have open communion which means all are welcome to take from the Lord's table. The only biblical requirement is that you know Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord. Amen? And uh, so we will bless these elements and distribute them to you while you're waiting for the element and while you actually are holding your elements. Just allow the Holy Spirit to search your heart. That's what the scriptures talk about, that we should uh, allow the Spirit of God to search us and and make sure there's no awe in our heart, no unforgiveness, no bitterness, resentment, whatever. And get those things straightened out, amen, uh, before you take communion. You don't want to take communion in an unworthy manner, the scriptures tell us. And so uh, please hold the elements and we'll take them together as part of the body of Christ, amen.
Thank you, Jesus. I was listening to the radio, and I don't know what my wife had on. I, was, I drove her mail car. And, uh, but it was something with Christian, a gentleman I had never heard his voice. I couldn't recognize his voice. But he said that he was alive in 1945. And that he had just came back from Germany from the war and he was talking about the atomic bombs that were dropped in Japan and he was relating this to the second time Jesus comes, the earth's going to be flooded with fire. And he said that he had gone to an event and I don't remember what the name of the event was, but he was one of the ushers or hosts there and it was a significant event and Albert Einstein came to the event. Did anybody else hear this this morning on the radio? And he was mentioning uh, in a very kind way, not gossiping, that he was a very uh, lonely, life didn't make any sense. He was very brilliant, but he didn't understand but he hadn't rejected God as many thought he was an atheist. He, he wasn't sure. He was trying to figure out what life's all about. He gave him a tract, he said. Now, I'm guessing this guy has passed away because I just did the math, and that would put this guy over 100 years old, uh, unless he's still alive, amen. But it was just so moving because I was thinking. He was talking about how the, when, you look at the, when you look at nature and you see all the strata in the rocks, he said something I had never heard before. He said, that's a witness from God that he once flooded the earth. And, and geologists have all kind of other stuff they've told us what it is, but it's God's indicator to us that he is who he is. And he did what he said he would do. And he promises to do it again. The, the end is near. I don't know if it's in our lifetime, it's 100 years from now, or it's 50 or 20 or tomorrow but we need to be right with Jesus, amen? And so these little simple symbols you hold in your hand, 
have such profound meaning for us today. There's just, this is Pat from our church. She makes this for us. This is actually unleavened bread. How cool. Now, does it have to be unleavened bread? No, but it's pretty cool that it is. And this is actually uh, truth in lending. This is cran grape, cranberry grape juice, okay? So it's not straight up grape, grape juice. It might taste a little different to you today. It doesn't matter. It's symbols. It's symbols that we receive by faith. If you're in need, you could drink water and a piece of toast seriously and take communion if you had to. Now, we're not, we are not making uh, light of these are sacred things. We set them apart. We pray for them. We make, these are holy elements that we, there's no power in and of them, but by faith we receive what they symbolize. Amen? On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to those gathered as I've given it to you and as the gentleman that served you did. Lord, we just thank you for this piece of bread, this unleavened bread that represents your body. And by your stripes, we know that we are healed. We know that 39 times, one less than death by Roman law, they whipped you, they scourged you. But we know there's healing we know there's provision. We know there are miracles for those who, not only those who are sick with COVID, but for those who have marital issues, for those who have financial issues, for those who have relational issues, for the Albert Einsteins of the world who don't understand. God, we thank you today that you've not made it hard. Nature declares the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. These elements declare the glory of God. And as fo grateful followers of the Lord Jesus, we receive this wafer, this unleavened bread today as a symbol of a great God that loved us that much. Let us take of his broken body together. says that after they accept they took this cup this was the third cup of that evening meal and he told those gathered this cup now represents something more powerful more profound and that what the blood of bulls and goats could never accomplish permanently he would shortly on the cross and today we're we're grateful that that cross this gentleman that was on the radio this morning said every time you look at a church that's got a steeple I kind of like steeples. Anybody else like steeples in there? I like it with that big old cross on there. Man, I like them. I like that red cross they used to have at House of Hope. They got another one up there now, but I, I love those crosses. I love them too when sometimes down south they'd say, got the cross, the big red cross, and right below it it'd say, Jesus saves. What a, what a testimony, amen? Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins, and it's only the blood of our Savior that satisfied a righteous and holy and loving God when Jesus hung on that cross and he said, uh, it is finished. That means God the Father received him as the worthy sacrifice. Aren't you glad for that today? Because we would never have been able to live up to it. So as grateful followers of the Lord Jesus, let's take up this cup that represents his shed blood. Amen. Let's stand again and let's worship the Lord. Janet's got a, another song for us to follow.
we do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. It's all creation groaning. It is. It's a new creation coming. It is. And it's the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst. It is. It's a good that we remind ourselves of this. It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone unable to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does the Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves? He does. Does our God get to dwell again with us? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave from every people and Every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and priests to God to reign with the Son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? worthy amen and is it wonderful that when we think uh, we did this play at our previous congregation we talk about and there was Jesus suspended between heaven and earth so when you think about that there he was suspended nails these nails and this crown of thorns and suffering for us 
not touching earth, but not in heaven, but yet he was the perfect spotless lamb of God. Amen. And because of that, because of what he did, we have right relationship with Jesus. Amen. With God the Father. But guess what? It also means that we should have right relationship with one another. Amen. We all are quirky. You know, that's my favorite word, quirky. And maybe I'll get a few of you to start using that term. But let's hug a few quirky people this morning. Let's hug a couple of people. Let's cross over the aisles and rows and welcome someone here to Hawthorne Assembly today. Amen. For those watching on Facebook Live, the service will continue in just a few seconds. If you want to know more about us, you can go to hawthorneag.org. We have a connect page. There's a section called Let's Talk. Fill it out, and we'd be happy to get back with you and let you know more about our church. Amen. Here in Northwest Wisconsin. Amen. The service will continue in just a few minutes. Lord, we thank you for this tithe that belongs to you. And we thank you for the offerings that we give above the tithe. Bless the gift and giver in your name. Amen. All right. Is there something I need? Actually, I need this right here. I'm just going to use the handheld today. I understand that Jonathan Raritan did just a fantastic job last week. Hey, we have a lot of visitors in here. We almost have as many visitors as we do regulars in here. And uh, we have a lot of regular people missing today, uh, but that's okay. Uh, matter of fact, I was going to preach to you on something completely uh, different than what I'm going to. I had all intentions to preach on this, that same spirit, and I just felt at the last minute to change and to preach on this. I don't know why, but this is just what I felt. And uh, so we're going to uh, share from, it's not really one of my bread and butter sermons, but it is, it, it is a sermon I've preached, I think, one time here uh, many years ago. But it's just something I felt like I wanted to share again. I think, I think it has something, I don't know, maybe it's somebody that's in here today and it will speak to your heart. Uh, but turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to read verses uh, 44 through 46 of Matthew 13. And this is the last week of camp uh, for the assemblies of God. Correct? Am I correct in saying this is the last youth, children, high school camp? What, which group is it this week? Oh, it's the squirrely ones. All right. <laughs> yeah. What's that? I'm a little, I got a little feedback in here. If, if we can get, this is a little hot, my mic, that would be great. We can maybe just t touch it down. It sounds like there's an echo or something. Matthew 13, verses 44 through 46, the pearl of great price. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure buried in a field that a man found and reburied. Then in his joy, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found the one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. Let's pray. Lord, I just ask you to help me today to share some thoughts from this passage with these individuals, God. May it be an encouraging word to them. And I just thank you for it in your name. Amen. So a couple weeks ago, I shared on... Uh, are you possessed by your possessions? And as I was looking over my notes and tweaking my notes for today, I was thinking, man, this is, this is, this is good because this really is kind of a uh, companion message to what we talked about, are you possessed by your possessions? Because remember Jesus told the rich young ruler, he said, sell everything, sell everything. Give it to the poor, then come follow me and you'll have treasure in heaven. And uh, this verse is a, a different angle on that same concept. It's a very familiar passage. There are multiple interpretations to this passage. Uh, in light of the entire chapter and the majority of the Bible scholars, this inference about the kingdom of God has to do with obtaining the most priceless gift any of us can receive. Amen? And that gift would be eternal life. Jesus used a number of parables. He spoke often in parables, correct? To say the kingdom of heaven 
is like. Now, we have people who have been Bible scholars in here for multiple decades. And we have those in here today who are new in their faith. So bear with us if I share things that are like, gee, pastor, we know that. Well, some in here don't know that. So the kingdom of heaven is like. And I've decided to share this passage from the point of view that we once we find the pearl of great price, we'll, we'll do anything and everything to keep it. Once we find the pearl of great price, we'll do anything and everything to keep it. Now, let me, let me set the record straight. Because uh, you're all coming here, not all of you grew up in the Assemblies of God. Matter of fact, if I asked you to raise your hand and say that you grew up in the Assemblies of God, it'd be less than half of this congregation right now. I was raised Lutheran. My wife was raised Methodist. I, I mean, how many, actually, it's just for the heck of it, who in here was raised in the Assemblies of God? Look at that, just a few. Less than half. Less than half the church. The, the Sermons of God has 16 statements of fundamental truths. One of the things that we are typically put in the camp with is what people would call Armenian versus Calvin. Now, honestly, we're in neither camp. We really aren't. We, we, we do believe in eternal security. What does that mean, though? That means that once you're saved, you can't just go and do something and lose your salvation. I remember when I was taught in confirmation as a Lutheran, I remember my Lutheran pastor said, now, Joe, you're on this road, and if you sin too much, you get off the road, you get too far off to the edge, and you're in this kind of mushy land. I didn't know what he meant. He said, you're not, it's not a good place to be, and you got to get back on the road. So it's like save, not save, save, not save. I don't believe to that. I don't subscribe to that. I believe that when you, ask Christ, when you receive Christ as your Savior, you're eternally secure. Now, can you reject your salvation? Yes, the Assemblies of God believes that. We believe that you can turn from God. The scriptures show that. To say that, oh, today you say a curse word and you get struck by a car and die, you're in heaven, okay? You're in heaven. We don't believe in this. There's this like, oh, gosh, I'm going to be so super careful. Now, we do have an obligation to serve God faithfully. So in light of this passage this morning, this pearl of great price, there's nothing that you can do to secure it in the sense of like, I, if I go to church more, if I pray more, if I read my Bible more, I've got to have even more security of my salvation. Well, your salvation is going to seem more blessed. Your salvation is going to seem more real. You're going to be like, you know, David said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. So for some people, there's no joy in your salvation because you're living like a devil, maybe. Ooh, I didn't mean to step on your toes there, but I did. He didn't say, give me back my salvation. He said, restore the joy. And this pearl of great price is so spectacular to this in this passage we've read that this person understands it's worth everything. It's worth doing whatever is necessary to keep it. Amen? To protect it. To guard it. To safeguard it. Scriptures, the scriptures are very clear that we need to endure until the end. The thought here is nothing the world offers would even come close to taking the place of the pearl of great price. Amen? That's why two weeks ago when I say, are you possessed by your possessions? Quite often we can see how sincere our faith is compared to how much the world has its grips on us. Now, I'm very clear with you all. I've told you, enjoy your toys Take vacation, go and do fun things, but make sure you're not possessed by your possessions. Make sure the pearl of great price is number one. Anyone in their right mind, once they found the pearl of great price, would be willing to surrender everything else, give up everything else to secure this treasure. How many of us see our salvation and everything it affords us as the pearl of great price. Just, I'll pause. 
Don't, don't raise your hand, but just think about that in your heart. How many of you see your salvation right now as, wow, it's everything? We're living in perilous times, people. There is going to come a time when, according to the word of God, things are going to go upside down on this planet. It's going to be not well for people. Of course, we believe in the rapture of the church, but for me to give you a date or a time or anything like that would be ignorant and it's not biblical. But here's the thing. Perilous times are coming even before the rapture. A lot of things in this world seem very precious. They seem quite valuable. Obviously, none of us sees our spouse as just something to consider keeping or not keeping, right? Uh, or the same could be said about our children or our grandchildren, amen? Grandchild number five just came into the world, and we're excited about it. And I'm already butchering her name, and so uh, it's Muriel. Did I say it right? Muriel Dawn. Muriel Dawn Dawkin. Amen. Fifth granddaughter. Amen. And uh, excited about it. Aaron had to help deliver the baby. I won't give you all the details as you didn't know that. Yeah. They didn't even get to the hospital. Is that a true story? True story. That's how it was back at the turn of the century, not the 21st century. People were having babies at home long for a long time. Amen. We would probably... We would probably give up anything to save or protect our spouse, our children, and our grandchildren, wouldn't we? We'd take a bullet for them, wouldn't we? Especially us guys. So we are talking about worldly things, which will, you know, and now when we're talking about worldly things that will never enter eternity, how do those things compare to the pearl of great price? Hey, I'm, I'm very keen on the temporal right now. You want to know why I'm keen on the temporal? Because I have, I have a father and a mother who are in their late 80s. And I have a mother and father-in-law who are in their late 80s. And not only are we concerned about their health and their welfare and their mental state, but we're also looking at two homes that are full of stuff. Can I just be transparent? It's overwhelming. And I realize that I don't want to get trapped. And it's not like I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to be able to help my parents. I'm thankful to be able to help. I, you think I'm perspiring right now. I was in Bushton, Kansas, and it was about 100 degrees upstairs in the north room. And we were getting a bedroom ready so that all the family can be together in Thanksgiving. But I'll do whatever is necessary. I'll do whatever is necessary. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll do what's ever necessary. Amen? Because we're supposed to. That's what the word of God says. But it still, it still weighs on me. Does it weigh on any of your hearts when you think about all the things that people have, the things that you have, and you're thinking about how do I shuffle this stuff? I even think about that one scripture where it says, the guy says, we'll just build bigger barns. Do you know the passage I'm talking about? Then it says at the end, you fool, today your life will be required of you. We ought to be saying every day. And, I, and I've begun to say this more and more. And, and some of you say, it sounds almost like it's rote. No, it's not rote. There are things I say every day so that I remind myself not to get possessed by my possessions, to make sure the pearl of great price is truly the pearl of great price in my life because I'm just as susceptible to the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So I say to myself, if it's the Lord's will, I get up off and say, Lord, your will be done today in my life. Even though I know I'd rather go do this or go fishing or this or that, your will be done in my life today. And if it's your will, Lord, I've already put on the calendar my last official Sunday as the pastor of this church which when I turn 70 will be my last official. So you have me for 10 more years unless you don't like me anymore and kick me out before then. But that's how long. And then I've said to the Lord, I want to go on the mission field, not like a missionary, but you know what I'm saying, 
go out and just be more um, adaptable, flexible, whatever, to go and be gone. Maybe I'll be pastor emeritus of Hawthorne Assembly. Who knows? Anyway, that's way down the road. But if that, I say, I always say, if it's your will, Lord, if it's your will. Now, we should, pr- many are the plans in a man's heart, right? But it's the Lord that determines the steps. The steps of a righteous man or woman are order of the Lord, right? So you ought to have plans, but you're always with those plans are saying, if it's your will, Lord, if it seems good to you, Lord. Just like when they pray and they hear, I love that verse that says, we prayed and it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and us. That would be the way you pray often. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and us. You ought to get counsel about things when they're major decisions in your life. I mean, look at our world right now. Uh, did you notice two years ago that you could hardly find a place to rent and a home to buy here in northwest Wisconsin? And something has happened in the last six months or four months or three months. Have you seen all the for sale signs that are all over the place? And people are thinking about all these things and thinking about buying and, and getting a bigger home and all that. And I used to say, pray. No, don't, I'm not saying not to buy a new home. I'm not saying not to change your home. I'm not saying not to have maybe a bigger barn. But I'm saying make sure you're saying it's the Lord's will for me. I know this is the Lord's direction for our life. There's a reason we're doing this. Because the pearl of great price is the most important thing in my life right now. Amen? So, I keep this on my desk. It says, Christ, the pearl of great price. Pretty cool, huh? It's just another one of those little reminders. I have lots of reminders. I carry with me in my pocket. I don't know if I, oh, it's in my other pants. I came this morning with my shorts on because I was helping finish up. We had the tent stretched out in the fellowship hall this morning. Let me tell you, it's been a busy weekend at Hawthorne Assembly. But in my pocket is a German coin, a coin from India, and a coin from Mexico. I keep them in my pocket all the time. And you know what they remind me to? To pray for Steve Dunn in Germany and my relatives that are in Germany, to pray for Art and Joyce Stone King in Tijuana, Mexico, and to pray for all those wells and those churches and those people in India that we've been teaching how to share the one minute witness. And I grab those and I pray for them. I have reminders in front of me. Now Johnny Johnson knows what I'm talking about, that if you want people to remember your business, you get things with your business name on it. Amen? You get pens, you get caps, whatever, and, you, and it's reminders. These are just little reminders of what really is the pearl of great price. It's what motivates me. It's what motivates me to want to take trips to love packages. Let me just tell you, let's just be super transparent. I'm always, I hope I'm always on, but let me be super transparent. It's not the best place to go sleep on a bed for a week there. They're not very comfortable beds. I'm just going to be honest, okay? Now, we have it lucky because we get to sleep with Aaron and Katie in their spare bedroom. But those are some, some those are their doozies, let me just tell you. But you know what? Blessed are the flexible. They won't get bent out of shape. You know why? Because the pearl of great price wants you to go there in October and help out and sort through books or maybe clean. It's not glamorous. It's not glamorous, but it is so rewarding. If you're going there because you think it's going to be the coolest place you've ever seen, aesthetically, it's not. But what it does to your spirit makes all the difference in the world. And when you remind yourself while you're there that this is what it's all about, that people are going to receive the pearl of great price. You gladly go. You gladly drive down there. You pack your car. And you gladly sit there and you eat things. Maybe you don't. They're not your favorite things to eat. But you eat them because you know you're there for a, pur- a higher par- purpose. For an eternal reason. Amen? Amen. So anyway, I, I'll tell you the story because we got a lot of visitors. I wouldn't tell this story, but we have lots of visitors. 
This is super important too, the Pearl of Great Price, because on our honeymoon, 37 years ago, some of you could probably tell this story. We went to Hawaii. I was a senior airman, E-4, in the Air Force. And back then, you could stay right next to the Hilton Hotel on Waikiki. As a senior airman, you could stay there for $27 a night, John Tuffield. You could go there, buddy. You, do you know about the Halakoa Hotel? Right, It's right on Waikiki Beach. You got to go use it before you get out of the military. It's so reasonable. So, what was that? Fort DeRussi. And uh, so we went around town, and there's tourist traps everywhere. FYI, it's not cheap in Hawaii, let me just tell you right now. So we're going to this one shop, and it says, pick your own pearl. So there's, they got the oysters, right? $5. I thought, <laughs> deal, deal, what a deal. So we go in there. It's a little booth. We're standing. He goes, which one do you want? I go, I'll take that one right there. So I grab it out of this. It's, it's in this little like salt water tank. Grab it out. He pries it open. Anybody else ever done this before? So, and he goes, oh, you got a great pearl. It was kind of a pinkish, which he said, it's a little more rare. He said, the most rare ones are the black and something else. I forget what they were. And I, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm looking at this going, I just got a pearl. And he's saying it's like rare. And I'm not even paying attention to the guy. He's talking, he's schmoozing me, he's sticking my wife's pearl and he's sticking it in this vice. And all of a sudden I see this drill press come down. And he's drilling a hole. I'm, I'm thinking, what are you doing? You're drilling a hole in my, my pearl. He says, oh, we got to put this in a beautiful setting in this i've got these 24 karat gold necklaces for you to put this in this is how your wife wants it i think it was like 67 dollars later <laughs> but you know what the pearl of great price is worth sixty-seven thousand dollars. the pearl of great price is worth selling everything the pearl of great price is worth surrendering everything, even when it doesn't make sense, because there's nothing that compares to the pearl of great price. In our, it, let's go back to our, our passage this morning. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. So this guy knows what he's looking for. This is not a rookie. This isn't Joe Doc and Johnny Come Lately who gets uh, hoodwinked. This is a guy that knows what he's looking for. And it says that he finds this pearl. And he knows pearls. He knows how rare they are, their size. And all. Now, you all know how a pearl is created, right? A little uh, irritant gets inside the oyster and... The oyster doesn't like it, but it can't spit. I don't know why it can't just spit it out, but it can't. So what it does is it starts to coat the little irritant. I think it's called necker or necker or something like that. Necre or necker. It's mother of pearl. And it starts coating it. And this is, a, this is a month's, year's process. And pretty soon there's this pearl that's inside the oyster. Isn't that amazing? Something that's bitter becomes something that's precious. And so this merchant who knows pearls, who knows uh, some of the, the idiosyncrasies of what a pearl is all about, goes, oh, I found the one. Now think about it. Think about it. This thing must be so rare. This is probably like getting, what's the, is it Honus Wagner? What's the baseball card? Who, who collects baseball cards? Is it, is it Honus Wagner? Is that the one you want that's like millions and millions? If, you, if you've got one of those, Paul, do you remember? I think it's Honus Wagner. You can look it up after church. I think if you get his, uh, his you know, trading card, it's millions. You, you, you could just say, I'm done. I'm done. So this merchant who's knowledgeable about pearls, who knows there's, uh, there's resources and there's money to be made, says... I found the one, I don't need anything else. 
I want my salvation to feel like that. I want my salvation to feel like that. Well, try on Buddha. Try on meditation. I heard, I was listening to something on the radio, going home, I was here late last night, and Art Bell, it was a, it was a, re, anybody heard of Art Bell, you know, late night on the radio? He had some guy on talking about drumming and how it makes you get closer to God. I thought, this is such hulkiness, I'm just going to turn this off, because this is goofiness. There's so many things that people are trying to do to find peace and joy and happiness. And the pearl of great price it's worth selling everything and holding on to it. And what do we mean by selling everything? We mean that nothing has that much attachment in your life that it draws you away. That it has a higher affection than the pearl of great price. Keep your toys, have cars that are reliable, keep your house clean, mow your grass, if you have grass. <laughs> you know, take care of your stuff. But just remember, it's temporal. It's temporal. Because the pearl of great price is worth selling everything. I shared all that. I had to, just, I gotta look at my notes here to see where I catch up with my notes. I want to say this again. This is a good point. Our passage speaks of the person finding the pearl, not even pearls multiple, but the pearl. And I am guilty in my life. I like toys. Anybody else willing to raise your hand and say you like toys? I like toys. All right, thank you. Some honest people in here. I like toys. I, I, bought a, I bought a BMW X5 just so I could say I owned a German car, okay? Now, I always say this because I know people go, even my brother said, oh, Joe, you shouldn't own a BMW. You're a pastor. They'll think you're rich. I said, I paid $7,600 for my BMW. $7,600. That's all I paid for it, okay? So now you know I wasn't being, I just wanted to own a German car, Okay? And we paid like $8,000 for that Audi out there. That is a gift from God. I'm not going to hide anything from you all because I don't want you thinking I'm spending all kind of crazy money. But yeah, I, I, I like my cars. Amen? I like my cars. I like certain things. I like certain clothes. I like shoes. I, 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 I bought these shoes. These are one of the few pair of shoes I actually bought brand new. Most of my shoes I just read leather or resole or whatever and just keep running with them. But I like these shoes. I like nice shoes. I bought these pants on the internet because they're like those stretchy ones. I like them. I like them. I was just thinking that this morning, I'd like to get a couple more of these in different colors because they're just so comfortable. Right? Johnny, we like that one shoe store. Masons. Who's been to Masons? Man, it's worth a trip just to go to Masons to go see all the shoes. Come on, get an amen there, all right? Let's have fun in life. But when you find the pearl at great price, nothing compares. I don't care if it's an ATV. I don't care if it's a snowmobile. I don't care if it's an Audi or a BMW or your favorite with this, that, or whatever. Nothing compares to the pearl of great price. Amen? And, and then the scripture tells us he finds a pearl singular, one that is so overwhelming that nothing else, no extra effort, no future effort will even compare to what he has found. He's willing to give up everything. He's willing to give up his career. He's willing to give up everything because he's found something that is so spectacular. Just close your eyes for just a second. This isn't the end. We're close. But I want you to think for just a second about your salvation. Is it that spectacular in your life? Because if it's not, 
Maybe we need to go back and pray that prayer like David did. Restore the joy of my salvation, Jesus. Restore the joy of my salvation, Jesus. I want my salvation to be so so real, so tangible, so palpable that when my feet hit the floor, I'm so thankful to be saved, to be born again, to know that I found the pearl of great price. Amen? It ought to change the way you think. It ought to change the way you act when people are ornery to you. It ought to change the way when maybe your wife says something or your husband says something sideways. You go, okay, it's just a moment. It's just a moment. It's temporary. It's a fleeting thing. It's going to pass because the pearl of great price is so precious and so powerful and so amazing that I don't want my bad attitude to ruin my spouse's opinion of me as a follower of Jesus. Because maybe she said something and it made me upset. And I fail still miserably. Just had to apologize the other day to Janet. Said, I'm sorry for snapping at you. Can you believe that Pastor Joe snapped at his wife? Now, I know none of you in here do that at all. <laughs> okay. So we would assume if we found something of such amazing value, we would not stop looking, and we would not stop looking because there might be more. Hmm. What if there's another one, or maybe even something better? Now, that's our humanity speaking, isn't it? I'm kind of that way. I mean, think about it. You know, guys, guys like to know what's over the next hill. Gals don't care. Guys want to know what's over the next hill. What's over there? I got to go figure it out. But, you know, I heard a speaker once say, that's because when Adam was created, he was created from the dirt of the ground outside of the garden. Good point. Eve was created in the garden, and she was crafted by the hand of God. So guys are dirt. You know, we're dirt bags. And uh, <laughs> Sorry. Just seeing if you're paying attention. I do. I like to want, ask my wife. We, we, one time we were living in Colorado. I did not have a four-wheel drive. I had a front-wheel drive. We were going up into the mountains. We were going on roads my front-wheel drive should never have gone on. I said, just a little further, honey. Let's just see what's around the next corner. That's in our nature, isn't it? That's in our nature. I want to be like this guy, though. I want to be so settled I want to be so secure in my salvation. I want to be so at peace. I want to be so at rest that I know that I know that I know that I found the pearl of great price. And there's nothing else that will be satisfied that can even come close. Amen? The, this pearl is so valuable, so priceless, that the merchant, the person that understands Pearl says, I'm selling everything so I can just keep, I'm selling, not, not only is he not going to do the Pearl business anymore, he says, I'm selling everything. Everything. That's why this message ties into two weeks ago about are you possessed by your possessions. Jesus told the rich young man what? Sell everything and give it to the poor. Then come follow me. And here's our point because we got visitors today. It's not about that we live in some kind of communal thing and you're going to give all your stuff to Pastor Joe and I'll decide who gets it. No, that's not biblical. Not biblical. The fact is you are willing as the Spirit leads you as we give out a call and say, hey, we have need. You're saying, you know what? I'll sell that parcel of land. I'll sell that extra vehicle. I'll give, I'll, I won't buy what I was going to buy. Or I'm okay with a $27,000 vehicle rather than a $54,000 vehicle. Does this, this is making sense? And I say, hey, guess what? I'm going to take that difference and I'm going to put it at the Pavilion Project. Or we're going to help love packages out buy more Bibles. Or we're going to help sponsor two more missionaries. Am I making sense? Or we're going to give $1,000 to Assembly Park Camp. Because we know they need help. And we're believing for another year of great camping next year. If Jesus, if Jesus tarries. If it's the Lord's will. 
He has found eternal life. He has found a hope for eternity. He has found something nothing else can offer. He is confident of his name recorded in God's book of life. He has the confidence which comes from the Holy Spirit who speaks to his heart and gives him full assurance of his future home. He is absolutely convinced he is a child of God, forgiven, and nothing can separate him from the love of God. Woohoo! That's a good place to go. Amen. Because it's the pearl of of great price. So as we wrap up today, what are you willing to do to protect what you have from outside influences? What are you willing to surrender? What's your heart's motivation right now? Are you saying, yeah, pastor, I'm all in. I'm all in with the kingdom. I may not be all in with you, but I'm all in with the kingdom. I love what a lady from our previous church in Grand Junction, Colorado, I put on Facebook last week. She said, stop looking for the perfect church and go to a church and worship the perfect God because everybody in there is flawed. Is that a good amen? Travis, is that worth an amen? Can I get an amen from Travis? Thank you, brother. Amen. I'll get you that dollar later. Amen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, he found the pearl of great price at, where was it again? Uh, yeah, no, you got baptized. Oh, sorry. Was that fireworks? Gordon Fireworks. And he found the pearl of great price. It's, you're going to hold on to it for everything, right? Amen. You found the pearl of great price. Last thing, let's look what it says in Luke chapter 12. Turn there as we wrap up this morning. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. Then he said, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured on by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. But God said to him, you fool, You will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Now, I shared a little bit of that earlier, but that last part I didn't. Let me read it again. A person is a fool to store up earthly wealth but not have a rich relationship with God. You notice there, it didn't say you can't store up earthly wealth. It didn't say that. It said you're a fool if that's all you have because you haven't found the pearl of great price. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Jesus, we thank you today. I pray that this message in 2022 is speaking to someone's heart. And I pray that the Spirit of God is speaking to them. Maybe they're dealing with situations in their life. Maybe it's finances. Maybe it's a home. Maybe it's investments. Maybe it's other things. And God, they're, they're struggling. They've even been crying out to you. And I pray that even today's message brings a level of peace and comfort. And that they know that no matter what happens... They've found the pearl of great price, and everything else is secondary. And God, we still want to store up a treasure. Your word tells us to have an inheritance saved up for our children and our children's children. So we keep doing that. We're good stewards of our money. We buy things that will last. We make sure we make wise investments. We do those things led by your spirit. But Lord, all of these things pale in comparison to the pearl of great price. And we thank you today that we know that and that we've settled that in our heart. And we're thankful that we're eternally secure. We're thankful that nothing will chip away at our salvation. No outside influence, no worldly possession, no worldly attainment, no worldly fame is going to chip away at our salvation. We are secure and we are committed because we found the pearl of great price. 
And we thank you for that, Jesus. Amen. Stand with me this morning, would you please? Janet's going to lead us in a worship song. If you have any need this morning for prayer, the altars are always open here at Hawthorne Assembly. We open the altars at the end for you to come to pray on your own or if you'd like me to pray with you. If you have a need this morning, you come and we'd be happy to pray with you. Christ is my reward and all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will see no turning back. I've been set free. the light of this message let's sing verse one again my reward christ you are my reward you are the pearl of great price thank you jesus christ is my reward christ is my reward and all of my devotion that's all i have now there's nothing world that could ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will sing, no turning back. I've been set free. Decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. 
the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Christ is enough. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Amen. The pearl of great price. Aren't you glad that you have it? Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you as we dismiss this service uh, that we'll have this outstanding week ahead of us. And God, we're just looking forward to what this week unfolds for each and every one of us as we just are treasuring in our salvation, as we are thankful for our salvation. And we're thankful today that we can be your hands and your feet extended to our world this week ahead in your name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Shake hands with a half dozen people, and we will see you um, next week. Amen.